I'm Scott Deal with Driven Racing Wool. Today we'd like to talk about some of the frequently asked questions about our products. One of the questions we get often is how long do I leave braking oil in my engine? Well that's not really a simple answer but I'm going to do the best I can to break it down for you. What we like to see, the, the, the general answer is we like to see at least an hour of runtime on the engine. So if it's going to be broken in in the car then we want to, after the, the cam break-in procedure, we want to go out and drive it for at least four or five hundred miles. If it's a race application and we're not spending more than uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes on the dyno, then feel free to go out and race it for a night or two, but then at that point it must be drained out and then gone to your operational oils. One of the other questions we get is the break-in oil just for flat tap of cams, and the simple answer is no you want to use it in any new rebuilt engine. For the flat tap of cam, it's a necessity. Otherwise, the cam will go flat pretty quick. But for a roller cam, it's all about a better part life. If you start off with a proper break-in oil, high zinc, low detergent, you'll reduce wear metals, which reduces point loading, which makes longer part life for your roller engines. And obviously, ring seal is important with a roller engine as well. One of the other questions we get is, how much zinc do I actually need in my oil? Well, that's not a simple answer. There's a lot of people out there that like to say, well, I just need 1,500 parts per million of zinc in my oil. That is not true, folks. It all depends on the type of zinc and the level of detergents in your oil. For example, there are 50 different types of zinc out on the market. The difference is, is the molecular weight and how much temperature and load they actually need to activate to put down that glossy phosphorus film. And one of the other things you need to know is zinc is actually an acronym for zinc dioxyl dithyl phosphate, which is ZDDP. A lot of people think it's actually the zinc that you need, but it's actually the level of phosphorus in your oil that makes a difference. Zinc is the carrier, while phosphorus is actually the workhorse that puts down the glossy phosphorus film that prohibits the metal to metal contact. One of the things that we always want to address is how much zinc is actually in the oil. And a lot of it depends on the application and also how much spring pressure. The more spring pressure, the more ZDP or more the balance between the zinc and the detergents. Why are we talking about detergents at the same time we're talking about zinc? They're both polar additives. They're attracted to carbon steel surfaces like magnets. They're fighting for the same space. So if you have the balance off, you end up having a cylinder wall full of detergents instead of your antiwear additives. So when we come to the break-in oils, it's really important to have a high zinc, low detergent. So there is nothing, no, the detergents is not impeding what your zinc is actually trying to do inside the engine. And then when you start going to application specific, then we can dial in the type of zinc you need with the correct balance between that and detergents. One of the questions I get is how often do I need to actually change my oil? Well, let's go back to our 66 Mustang that we were talking about before. If it's just a daily driver going back and forth to the county fair and to the, the car shows, the, the conventional hot rod oil is a 3,000 mile once a year oil change. And it's always best to change your oil in the fall before you put it away for storage. If you have a car that has a synthetic street performance oil in it, it's not a simple answer, folks. A lot of people want to say 5,000 miles or 10,000 miles. A lot of it depends on how you're driving the car. It's a lot harder on the oil to go 5,000 miles back and forth to work every day or going 5,000 miles to California and back. Going to California and back is actually a lot easier on the oil. The more highway miles, the farther you can go in between changes. One of the questions we get is which viscosity do I need for my application? Well, folks, once again, that's not an easy answer. But let me give it a whirl and let me see if I can explain it to you. There's two big deciding factors on how much viscosity you need for your application. The first one of which is your bearing clearances. The looser your bearing clearances are, the more viscosity you need. The other one is operating oil temperature. The hotter my oil actually runs, the thicker the oil needs to be. So, the answer is you probably need to talk to somebody like your engine builder to determine which viscosity he thinks he needs. If not, feel free to go to Summit Racing or to our website and we'll try to help you. One of the other questions we get often is they want clarification on multi-viscosity oils. For example, a 10W40. 
They, most people think that a 10W40, it acts like a 10 weight oil when it's cold, and then as the oil heats up, that it actually becomes a 40 weight oil. Folks, that's not how it happens. So the number before the W is a cold cranking simulator test that's done at 30, 30 degrees below zero. So what that means is a zero W30 will actually let the engine crank easier than a five W30. Hopefully we answered all of your questions today. But if we did not, feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments section below.